here. Facebook, and we'll do a, um, a test one, two, test one, two, and then we will. We got TikTok going, and now we will make sure Facebook is live, and then I have our message. Team. All right, so Romans, Romans is where we'll be coming from tonight. Once we do our introductions and get everyone on here, uh, good evening to all of our TikTok friends and family. Uh, good evening to all of our Facebook friends and family. So let me make sure it says I got a lot going on. So let me close some apps on my computer. We will have a word of prayer. And then we're going to get going. All right, Lord, thank you. How's everybody doing out there in the TikTok land? On Messenger tonight, we have Sister Pittman. We have Sister Gracie. Uh, Sister Jamie. I think I saw Sister Crystal. Sister Crystal, yep, Sister Crystal's there. Brother Vaughn has joined. We also invited, and I think we'll be coming back, Sister Joanne on the uh, Messenger. Sister Mary is going to join us on Messenger. And then I think Sister, uh, uh, let me see, who was it? it? just left. Mary. Oh, and Sister Anitra is going to come back. We're coming from Romans. We're starting a brand new Bible study series. Uh, we're going to go through the entire book of Romans and allow the Lord to speak to us through Romans. So get your Bibles ready. If you're on your nightly walk or you're in the kitchen cooking, just listen. We'll be more than happy to, to share scriptures in the chat. And then this will be available later on uh, YouTube and Facebook for you to go back and watch. And so before we go ahead and get started here... May will you open us up Absolutely. with a, a word of prayer. God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for blessing us with breath. Yes. We thank you for giving us um, our mental faculties. We thank you for giving us a desire to hunger and thirst for righteousness and to uh, be hungry for your word. Mm -hmm. We pray that your Holy Spirit will lead God and direct us in all truths. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Uh, Rachel's going to keep an eye on, on TikTok. So all of your questions, all of your comments tonight, this is the space where you can ask questions. This is the opportunity where you can jump in. Uh, you can, uh, we don't want to call it a, an argument or debate. We'll, we'll, we never argue a debate in, in Christ, but we can challenge one another what the word of the Lord says. Um let me give you some context to Romans before we get started, okay? Um, if you've ever read Romans, it's one of the most important books in the Bible. Uh, it's one of the most significant foundational truth books that you can read, that, that you can walk away. You could probably just read Romans alone and understand Christ, understand Christendom. And so in this letter that Paul writes, you have to first understand the context of when he wrote it, why he wrote it, who was the audience he wrote it to, what did Paul do up to this point? There were Christians already in Rome. Uh, many believers uh, and, and uh, writers thought that the Christians migrated there through all of the trials and all the, the persecution that the church had, had gone through. Uh, if you think back to Acts chapter 28, we won't look at it, but in Acts chapter 28, uh, that was the day of Pentecost and or, or Acts chapter two was the day of Pentecost. But we find throughout Acts chapter two, all the way through Acts chapter 28, there were different people from Rome who came in and to Jerusalem, learned about Christ. And then they went back to Rome. The Bible says that on the day of Pentecost, there were many people from Rome in town. So they heard about Christ. They went back to Rome. They established uh, the Christian community. We believe that Peter and some of the disciples also made visits to Rome prior to Paul actually getting to Rome. So when you think about what we're getting ready to read, Paul is writing to a group of people who should know Christ, 
he's writing to a group of people who aren't new to these ideals, these 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 uh, philosophies, these methods. And so he's encouraging a group of people who already know who Yeshua is, who Christ is. The second thing to remember is I give you some context to Rome as we go through this is that this is about 20 to 24 years after Paul's road to Damascus trip where he meets Yeshua himself on the road. Mm -hmm. So Paul has had multiple years of growing in the faith, having an opportunity to in, in, you know, improve his preaching skills, his writings. And so what we're reading is a very mature book to a group of people where Paul has already journeyed many, many years. Here's what I want you to think about. Paul has already written his book to Thessalonian, uh, Thessalonica. First and second Thessalonians was written around 50, BC, uh, 50 AD. Uh, the book to Galatia was written somewhere between 48 and 55. First and second Corinthians was written prior to Rome, uh, getting this book. Uh, and theirs was about 53 to 55. And then he writes to the Romans in 56 or 57. So he, he's already journeyed. Think about think about this also. He's already had missionary journeys to Philippi, uh, to Thessalonica, to Berea, to Athens, Greece. He's been to Corinth. He's been to Ephesus. Uh, he also had been to Antioch. He'd been to uh, Iconium, Lystra, and Derbe. Paul is well traveled. He he is well versed in who Christ is. And so this is a very, very mature scripture uh, that we're going to read tonight. And so I just want to give you some background, some history of how Brother Paul wrote this. Who was this audience? It was the Christians, but it was also a group of Christians who had also had in their purview a lot of different philosophies that was happening within the Roman community. Uh, there were a lot of folks who were Stoics. Uh, there were folks who were Epicureans, and I I can give you a little bit a little bit of detail of what a Stoic and an Epicurean is. But a Stoic was one who believed in many different philosophies. They believed that there were a lot of opportunities to trust a lot of different gods, and you didn't have to land on any one particular belief. The Epicureans were also in the Roman community. And I believe if I remember, I'd have to go look at my notes here, but the Epicureans uh, followed Epicurus, And he was one that thought that uh, you, you serve nature. He was one of the first that thought that you, you, you serve mother universe and that everyone's lives had purpose through the universe. And so Paul is addressing a group of people and we're going to see it later on where, you know, he says, you have all these different gods. They also serve Zeus. They believe that even the emperor himself was a god and they worship. So he had all these different beliefs challenging Christendom. And so Paul kind of has this backdrop as he gets ready to pen this letter. Understand, he has not even traveled into Rome yet. He wants to go to Rome. 24 years of ministry and he hadn't visited yet. Have you ever had someone say, have you been to New York yet? Have you have you ever been to San Francisco? And you're like, well, I, I've been wanting to go to San Francisco. I've never made it to Miami. I'd love to make it to, to Dallas or one of those cities. I know a lot of you think that, you know, Oklahoma is one of those destinations that you don't put on your, your to-do list. <laughs> Come on to Oklahoma. There's a lot to do here. And so Rome, uh, Paul is in that same kind of circumstance of, I've been preaching for 24 years. I've been telling everybody else and visiting and writing letters to all of these other churches. And I've yet to go to the, the capital of the city who rules everything. The, the emperor at the time when Paul was first on the road to Damascus was Claudius. And then by the time he writes this letter, uh, the emperor, I believe, was Nero. Let me make sure my notes are right. Yeah, Le Nero. So he ends up uh, serving under or, or ministering under two different presidents at the time. So that's the context of, of Brother Paul writing this letter. We, again, we can see a lot of this in Acts. You can hear a lot of this in his other writings to the other churches. Any questions or thoughts or comments so far before we 
get to this next next piece. I have a quick question, babe. Out of curiosity, does mm-hmm. it state the age? Oh, of that's Paul? a good. That's a real good question. I mean, I'm not trying to throw no, no, you no, no, off. No, 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 it was no, no. just no. That's of, a that's a good question. I I should have I should have known you when I had every other question. What was the question? How old was How old was Paul during? Brother Vaughn, say what's the question? How old was Paul during the time of uh, his writing to the Romans? Um, I do know that he he dies about ten years, ten to fifteen years after, after this that. writing. Oh, okay. He passes, or he's okay. he's beheaded. Does anybody know the answer before I look it up? I'm gonna give a real Kentucky answer. He was old. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, while he's looking that up, by the way, brother Ken, welcome to the SEC. Hey, we are in the SEC. Very, very good. Oh, you boomer sooner. Um, Is there any way you guys can turn up your end a little bit or no? Amen. My volume? Yes. Let me see. Let me look. I will try. If nothing else, I can maybe try to switch my... Hold on, TikTok. I'm going to get our uh, audience on... uh, Let me try a different microphone. Okay. Is that better? Say something else. Is that is that better? Is the volume a little bit better there on on, on the messenger? If not, I can try. Yes. Yeah, it's a little bit better. That yes. is better. Okay. Okay. I'll speak up here. I think that's the mic for Messenger, and that's the mic for Facebook, and that's the mic for TikTok. All right. Uh-huh. So here we are. Can you hear us? Yeah, we can, we're we good. All right. So Romans chapter one, I, I think he was in his 50s. I think he was in his 50s. Uh, one of the uh, sources that I, I, I use, he was in his 50s, which meant he was in his 30s when he was persecuting Stephen. Uh, and then he dies around his 60s. He was beheaded. And so here we are. Okay. This is his seventh book or seventh letter that he he had written again he had already journeyed to philippi he had already visited the people of antioch he's already visited ephesus he's already written two letters to the thessalonians he's already written a letter to the galatians he's written two letters to the corinthians and so actually this is his sixth letter i apologize this is his sixth letter after 24 years of ministry I'm reading from the Living Bible tonight just to give some context to those who are watching online that, so we don't confuse you with the thuses and thous. Dear friends, in Rome, this letter is from Paul, Jesus Christ's slave, chosen to be a missionary, sent out to preach the good news. Right there at the very beginning, he tells us his purpose, what this whole letter is is getting ready to be about the good news. The good news was promised long ago by God's prophets in the Old Testament. We've talked about that in Bible studies, Isaiah and David and many of the other prophets who who prophesied Hamashiach, the Christ, the Messiah. It is this good news about his son, Yeshua Christ, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who came as a human born a baby into King David's royal family. Again, I said that this book by itself could give you a full establishment of Christendom. If you had no other book on an island, Paul breaks this down. And by being raised from the dead, so we go straight from him being a baby to the resurrection, all in the first paragraph, it was proved to that he was the mighty son of God with the holy nature of God himself. Wow, Paul. Just get right to it then, won't you? Mm -hmm. And now through Christ, all the kindness of God has been poured out upon us undeserving sinners. And now he is sending us out around the world to tell people everywhere the great things that God has done for them so that they too will believe and obey. Let's pause right there and let everybody process these first six ver- first five verses. I'm going to highlight something I didn't highlight earlier. 
He's sending us around the world to tell others what he has done. Do you think God is still doing that today, babe? This message, this this opportunity to send people around the world. Absolutely. You think Paul knew about TikTok? You think he, <laughs> he could foresee that, um, prophesy this? This is our letter. This is all I, the Christians. I can't letter. say Paul would have that vision at all. During of technology. That, during that time of technology, no. No. But the desire of getting God's word out to the people. What's your verse still, the same? Verse, still the same. Verse 5. Read verse 5 from the King James Version. By whom we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name. All nations. Okay. Nations. All nations. Okay. Everywhere. Everywhere. All right. Um, I don't know who that is. Maybe it's Sister Pippin. Can you go on mute yes. just, just for a second, and then I'll bring you back on when you have a question or a comment. There's just a little background no noise there. Okay, uh, for me. Yes, ma'am. Um. So what do I do? If you got a question, you gonna turn me off? No, you gonna I'm, turn me off? Let me look. I don't know if I can do that. You just hit that little. Uh, you know I don't know. <laughs> all right, I'll turn you down just a little bit. You'll be all right. All right, so verse 6. Any questions, comments so far, verses 1 through 5? TikTok, Sister Pittman, uh, anyone there that studied or looked at the first five verses of Romans? Comments, questions, thoughts, opinions, concerns. What, what, what do you get out of those first five verses of Romans? Good news. I'm a missionary. He was a baby. He died. Came from the royal priesthood of David. He God's poured out his kindness. We didn't deserve it. Now I'm doing this to let everybody know. That's first five verses. He was called by God. He was called by God. I like that. He, he was called by God um, to fulfill a certain promise during his life on earth, during his time. Okay. Anybody else? Care said, spreading the word of God. That's, mm -hmm. that's, the, that's the introduction. I'm here to spread the good news. That's his very first promise. A verse. Let me tell you why I'm here. Let me tell you what my purpose. Do you know what your purpose? Hey, like Paul knew his purpose, and he put it in the letter. My purpose is to spread good news. That's what I'm here mm. for. That's my purpose. Yeah. All right, let's keep moving. We're not going to belabor this. It's a lot, a lot of goodness here. Uh, verse six. Read your version, babe. Six and seven. Among whom are ye also? the called of Jesus Christ to all that be in Rome beloved of God called to be saints grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ my, my version says may all of God's mercies and peace be yours mm. may all of God's mercies and peace be yours like he's declaring it he, he he hadn't even told them about chapter 8 which I just want to get to so bad he he comes out and lets them know just as we let one another know all of his mercies and peace may they be yours from the father and from the son go ahead baby Verse, go ahead question comment thought all right, babe, verse eight. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. Mm. For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his name, 
that without ceasing, I make mention of you always in my prayers. So context, 24 years, Paul has been in ministry. He's traveled to multiple other cities and, and sat under the apostles. He goes to Philippi, Thessalonica. He has gone to Ephesus and other places. And when he goes to these places, he says, wait, y'all were talking about who? The Romans. Yeah. Remember, they still traveled for festivals. They still left their, their, the Jewish community still left their regions to come to Pentecost, although Christ has now created a new, you know, uh, uh, destination or reasoning for their travel. When Paul is around other people, they're talking about the Romans. And he says, I hear good things about you. Everywhere I go around the world, people are saying, man, have you met the Christians in Rome yet? Right. That'd be like me saying, have you met the Christians in Kentucky yet? Man, they're some really good people. How about how about Cincinnati? Have you ever been to Cincinnati? There's some really good people in Cincinnati. There's some. I tell you, them Oklahomans. There's something else. And there's other places you go where they say, don't don't, don't you go down to them streets. And I'm not gonna say any cities. We don't want to offend anybody. No. But no. you get the point. Paul said, yeah. when I when I go to other places, they talk about you. Here's question number talk one. about your faith. Your faith. They, they talk about you and your faith and how you are representing your faith. Question one tonight for Bible study. Wherever other people go, can they say, can this be said about your walk with the Lord? Your family group. Mm -hmm. Your faith is becoming the living. The Living Bible version says, "Your faith is becoming known around the world. Everywhere I go, you're being talked about." Oh, what a what a blessing for others to praise you, right? For, for someone else to lift you up. you up. Yeah. Can and this is a rhetorical question, not to be answered tonight, but. That's the question I think about when I read that verse is that, man, could Paul write that about us? Mm -hmm. Man, when I left Oklahoma City, people were talking all about you. All right. Keep going, babe. Uh, verse 10, making request, if by any means now at length, I might have a prosperous journey by the will of God to come unto you. For I long to see you that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift to the end ye may be established. That is that I may be comforted together with you by the mutual faith, both of you and me. Okay, I'm going to read verse 9 and 10 from the Living Bible. God knows how often I pray for you. Day and night, I bring you and your needs in prayer to the one I serve. Hmm. Verse 10, and and the one and one of the things I keep praying for is the opportunity, God willing, to come at last to see you. If possible, I, I'll have a safe trip. And so going back to verse 9, I think about us. I think about the community that God has created with us. We are literally verse nine. Let me read verse nine again to you all and think about what we do every morning. God knows how often I pray for you. Day and night, I bring you and your needs in prayer to the one I serve with all my might, telling others the good news about his son. And the one thing that I keep praying for, hmm, maybe one day, there's an opportunity for all of us to get together. Maybe some big conference somewhere in Oklahoma City or Dallas. Maybe one day, babe, there's an opportunity, Lord willing. I love how Paul says that in the Living Bible. God willing, we all get together one day and just have like a two-day, three-day revival. Would that be nice? I thought about that this morning. That, that's crazy. I literally thought about that this morning. Is that right, Jamie? Jamie? Yeah. Do, do you know that others have also brought that to my attention? 
and said that they would get on a flight tomorrow if we were to put a date out there. And I said, hold up, hold, okay. hold up now, hold up. That's extensive planning. One, one person has even gone so far as to believe that that was the Lord talking to them. Um, I'm not going to mention their names, but at oh, least a, Angie said, oh, that would be wonderful. See, see? And, and as we study tonight's scripture, um, this is exactly what Paul did. He met with people. Now, when we get the pleasure of the Internet. There's no cost associated here. No one has to get a hotel room. We don't have to book a hotel uh, lobby. No one has to get a rent a car. And, and we get to do all that here, then go eat dinner in our own places. But but one day, Lord says the same, Sister Anitra. I know you'd be on the first flight here uh, to, to come fellowship with all the saints. And one thing I keep on doing. Yes, I will. I know you would. I know you would. How's auntie doing? She doing much better? About the same? Okay, we'll keep reading. Uh, you guys can count Jamie in. <laughs> all right. All right. Verse 11 and 12. Go ahead and read that. Let's see if we got any questions or comments. Go ahead. For I long to see you that I may that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift. Mm -hmm. To the end ye may be established. 12. That is that I may be comforted together with you by the mutual faith both of you and me. So he's saying in so many words I know that you haven't met me yet. Um, I know people are talking about you. I, I'm, I'm hearing people talk about you. You guys are hearing about me. Maybe one day, Brother Paul can get to Rome and we can meet up. All they had was letters from other Christians. They had Peter visiting. They have not met Paul yet, but Paul's like, I've been doing this for 24 years. I would love to encourage you and vice versa. Verse 12, I'd love for you to encourage me. We encourage one another. This is an encouraging word for me because uh, who's the preacher's preacher? Who, who's the apostle's apostle? Right? Who, who's the, the prayer warrior's prayer warrior? So we get together in times like this, and I love reading your comments in the chat in the morning. I love reading uh, the messages you send me privately because they encourage me. I love picking up the phone and calling Sister Pittman. She encourages me. I love hearing all of you all. And this, again, this first chapter is us. Like, we are this group. We are those Gentiles who've decided to band together and follow the Lord. Um, questions, comments, thoughts so far. We've gotten through 12 verses of Rome, uh, Romans with 30 minutes to go. My goal is to try to get through a chapter a week. Um, not in a rush, but I want to pause and make sure if you got questions, I know there's going to be some really good questions as we get further into the chapters, uh, but we'll keep moving if no thoughts or comments or questions. All right, verse 13, Paul again, context. Remember, 24 years, visited many other cities, written letters to many other groups. And so this is his first address to the Romans, verse 13, Living Bible. I want you to know, I really want you to know, dear brothers, that I, I planned to come many times before, but it was prevented so that I could work among you and see good results, just as I have among other Gentile churches. Again, Paul is establishing that I've been doing this. I actually tried to get in there, fit, fit it in my calendar between the first Thessalonica, uh, uh, Thessalonica trip and the second one, but it just it just didn't work out. It wasn't God's will. I trust that, again, even this is an encouraging word to somebody. Do you know that all of our steps are ordered by the Lord? Even when we plan to do things and those things don't work out according to our plans, that just meant that the Lord didn't mean it was time for Paul to go. And whatever you think that you should have done and you should have went, where you what you should have accomplished, if you haven't accomplished it yet, it just wasn't your time. Hmm. Brother Ken. Yes, ma'am. Come on. Do you do you think that 
during the, during the process of him listening to others and hearing things about other people, some of it was good, bad, and ugly. I mean, it, you, when you when you think about people talking about people today, uh-huh. it's not always good. It's not mm-hmm. always something good. They find fault in a person's righteousness. They'll find fault in that and make it seem that it's, it's it's wrong or be negative in some manner. And I was just thinking, you know, I know when I want to see somebody or see something, I want to see for myself. You know, I hear all of these things, but I want to go see for myself. And, and I was just wondering, was mm-hmm. it, that kind of what he was thinking as well when he wanted to visit and see for uh, himself, see for himself, because some of that stuff had to be negative that he was hearing. That I is no, 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 no. That was an amazing question because you kind of put on a T for me. What we're going to try to get through here, if we get to the if we get to the end of the first chapter, and uh, spoiler alert, spoiler alert, spoiler alert, Sister Pittman. He's being very kind in his, his opening address. For those who have read Romans before, we, we know by the time we get to chapter 5, he has to remind them right. about sin not being your master. He has to remind them in 5 and 6 and 7 that there's no condemnation. He has to remind them, don't let sin control your body. What is this I'm hearing? Like, we, we're going to get there. It's not even, I mean, you that. don't even have to go that far. The end of chapter one talks already, about, yeah, talks about sexual and immorality and uh, turning individuals to uh, a reprobate mind because of their lust. Yeah, yeah. So, yes, Sister Pittman, he, he had a purpose for wanting to visit. He wanted to see the city. He, he wanted to see the, the challenges that they were facing as Christians. He wanted to check out the leaders within the church to see if you know what he heard had the same power of, of what's being delivered, the application. So, yes, yes, we're all the, I've heard some things. About, again, his, his opening address is everyone's talking about you. I've heard some good things. I want to let you know that Jesus is Lord. I want to remind you that he came from the seed of David. I've tried to get there many times. I've heard about your faith. And like Rachel says, we're getting ready to get into it. He's getting ready to kind of, I wouldn't say go in, but he's going to share some initial thoughts. Again, this is 16 chapters. He, this had to be a good day or two worth of writing and rewriting. I would have loved to see uh, the Septuagint and the Dead Sea Scrolls that they found these writings on. Good question. Any other questions, comments, and thoughts? That's a good thought, Sister Pittman. Where do we stop at? Uh, 16? No. Uh, 14. 14. So Paul then says, I'll read from the Living Version, for I owe a great debt to you, to everyone else, both the civilized people and the uncivilized alike. Yes, to the educated and the uneducated, so that the fullest extent of my ability, I am ready to come also to you in Rome and preach the good news. Again, he he's establishing to them this is not the end of me. This is not just a Facebook post. This isn't just some some long email I'm sending. I'm going to follow this up at some point. And, and to, to let you all know, Paul did eventually get to Rome. Um, the, there's no record of it in the writings, but the first century historians, like literally those 20 to 40 years after these writings, the historians do have Paul entering Rome we find out in his letter to his last letter to Timothy he is in shackles he he is in Rome getting ready to probably be executed for his faith uh it's in the last chapter in, in Timothy that we learn that he's he's probably got a couple of months left and he's letting mm-hmm. Timothy know that this is this is it he's in Rome at that time we also know that he wrote uh mm-hmm. philemon while he was in rome he was in Coloss while he was in rome he was in uh what did i say philippi ephesus when he wrote rome 
He wrote his letters to Timothy while he was uh, in Rome. Uh, he also wrote, looking at my notes here, I'm going to say uh, Philippians, Colossians, the letter to Philemon, Ephesus. So he eventually makes it to Rome. So again, spoiler alert, spoiler alert, alert. He makes it to Rome, but this is just our introduction. Those 24 years, those 24 years of him not knowing what's going on. Like, I've never been there. I don't know what the people are like. Mm -hmm. This is the yeah. same government that, that runs the whole world. I want to get to the epicenter of this government. Um, I'm ready to come. Verse 16. And this is a, a verse that's quoted a lot. But now that we have the context of of who Paul was, the 24 years between his conversion to all of these letters, all the cities he's visited, his full understanding of the power of the gospel. He says this in verse 16. I'm not scared. I'm, I'm not ashamed to come to Rome and, and teach the good news about Christ. I've been wanting to come. Do you see the context there now? We say it like this, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation. But the context is, I've been trying to get there. I've been wanting to get to Rome. And when I get there, I'm going to tell you, I'm not going to be scared. I'm not going to be ashamed. I'm not afraid of the Stoics. I'm not afraid of the Epicureans. I'm not afraid of the government. I'm not afraid of the other philosophers. I'm going to tell you about the word of God because it is so powerful that it can bring people who hear it to heaven. This message was preached first to the Jews alone, but now everyone is invited to come. This is the good news that tells us that God makes us ready for heaven, makes us right in God's sight. When we put our faith and trust in Christ to save us, this accomplishes, this accomplished from the start to finish. This is accomplished. Let me pause. Let me start over. This is accomplished from start to finish by faith. As the scripture says it, the man who finds life finds it through faith or trusting God. I'm going to pause right there. Paul's fired up. Again, if you've read Romans, you know he's getting ready to go in on, on a lot of different topics. Mm -hmm. But he's letting them know when I'm getting ready to write in this letter, I'm not holding back. I'm not ashamed. I, I know the power that the word of God has. So I, I'm going to share it with you. Paul is the same one who wrote to, uh, we believe he wrote uh, Hebrews to the Jews and we it's our scripture memory that the word of God is living. It's powerful. It's sharper than any two edged sword. So I'm going to use this sword. It's the same Paul who said the weapons of our warf warfare, they, they aren't carnal. They're mighty through God through the pulling down of a stronghold. Casting down imaginations and everything that exalted itself Self. against the word of God. So guess what he's getting ready to do. He's getting ready to cast down a bunch of thoughts and imaginations. Now, Paul could have, for all my religious people out there, Paul could have added in verse 17, Brother Vaughn, the way to heaven is faith and tithing and speaking in tongues and going to church and fasting. He could have. He had an opportunity after 24 years of ministry. He could have told the church all the ways to get to God. Again, he's already visited and established the foundation of the church. And in that foundation of the church, he leaves out speaking in tongues. He leaves out tithing and fasting, all the things that our current religious structure requires of man. Paul said very simply, babe, can you read me your version? Verse 17. Verse 17. For therefore is the righteousness of God revealed okay. from faith to faith as it is written the just shall live by faith. There it is. Famous scripture. Famous scripture. The just. Wait. 
How about faith and works? What does Paul say about, about attending church? Nothing. Mm -mm, I don't say anything. Nothing. I want to encourage somebody tonight who feels obligated that if you miss service on Sunday, the pastor's going to be upset and the members are going to miss you. It's according to your heart and your faith. Paul wrote a book to a group of people who had been in the, the way. I want y'all to get this tonight. 20 plus years. What we're getting ready to study over the next 16 weeks is what he expected for them to have already learned, grown, matured, evolved in 20 plus years. He, he wasn't expecting them to be baby Christians. He wasn't writing to a group of people who, who he wanted to give time to mature. He's writing to a group who've been around, think about us, mm -hmm. for 20 plus years that should know the gospel. He, it, he's very clear about it. It's faith and faith alone. Let's see how much time we got left. 20 minutes. This is good. We, we're going to make it. Verse 18. Questions, comments. Let me pause. Questions, comments, thoughts. Talk to us. Church is the pillar from what I read. So we are the church. Who, who put that in the chat? Lovely Natalie. We're going to learn, Sister Natalie, that we the people, not the building, not the lease, the, 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 the mortgage, uh, not the light bill, not the the, the stained glass windows, that isn't particularly the church. What we've learned is that what we're doing right now, what we're doing right now is church. Does that make sense? Yeah. We, the body of Christ. Anytime another one of our scripture memories, y'all know where this is found, where two or three come together, Christ says, I'm right there. In the midst. I'm right there in the midst. Where you just established church. We don't need to pay a pastor's cell phone bill. We don't need a church bus. We don't need food at the at the end of the service. I mean, when my wife get together and have a Bible study, that's the establishment. Does that make sense? Does that help the context yeah. of that? All right. Yeah. Verse 18. But God shows his anger from heaven against all sinful, evil men who push away the truth from them. Babe, read your version, verse 18. For, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. For the truth about God is known to them instinctively. God has put this knowledge in their hearts. What's your version say? Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. For God hath showed it unto them. All right, pause, pause, pause. This is the scripture that we all can go to that we use in our apologetics of the gospel. Apologetics just meaning our defense when, of, of the foundation of God, our defense of scripture. When people say, well, they don't know any better. When no one ever, mm -hmm. no one ever taught them mm -hmm. the, the Bible. They didn't get raised in the church. They didn't get a good christian upbringing and we're it's interesting babe it's interesting that paul uses this as a pretext to us getting over to verse 27 i don't want to get too far ahead but paul tells us in verse 19 that everybody knows in their everybody. heart right from wrong mm -hmm. no one gets to say well i was born this way no one, no one gets to say, I didn't know any better. Mm. Pa Paul establishes. Let's read this again. Who Does anyone have a different version? Uh, maybe a, a CS, CVS or a, uh, a NIV version on, on my messenger chat. Our, our friends here, my family on, on messenger. I'm, I'm curious what verse 19 says in a different version. I can pull up my NASB here. Verse 19. Yeah. Oh, who has the living? Um, oh, yeah, I got I do. No, I have the living also. The living says that for God is known to them instinctively. 
Um, the King James said that it has been a manifest in them. What does the NIV say, somebody? You type it in the chat. If you have it. Brother Vaughn, what version do you have? He sent a message. He had a family emergency. Okay, okay, okay. I didn't see that message. All right. We can keep moving because what we're getting ready to get into next is is kind of like, ah, uh, it makes sense why Paul said what he said. Since earliest time, men have seen the earth, the sky, and all that God has made and have known of his existence and great eternal power. So they will have no excuse. That's what I just said, huh? They have no excuse when they stand before God at judgment day. Yes, they knew all about him, right? But they wouldn't admit it or worship him or even give thanks for all of his daily care. And after a while, they began to think of silly ideals. Ooh, this is us today of what God was like and what he wanted them to do. The result was their foolish minds became dark and confused my wife sent me a clip she found on youtube or was it facebook reels and a pastor had got up in the pulpit and announced a man let me be clear here i don't want tiktok to ban us but i'm just stating facts a male pastor had gotten up and pointed over to his husband Remember that clip? Mm, yeah. And my heart got really sad because people were mm. clapping. And people, in church. In church, people were acknowledging. In church. And Paul says right here, the results of their foolish minds became dark. Mm. And confused. What's your version say in verse 20, 21, babe, 22? For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. Mm -hmm. being understood by the things that are made even his eternal power and godhead okay. so that they are without excuse okay because that when they knew god they glorified him not as god neither mm -hmm. were thankful but became vain in their imaginations and their mm -hmm. foolish heart was darkened Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. And changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible men and to birds and four footed beasts and creeping things. They took, they began, to, and this is what it says living. And then instead of worshiping the glorious, everlasting God, ever living God, they took wood and stone and made idols for themselves, mm -hmm. carving them to look like mere birds and animals, snakes, and puny men. Um, Paul is prophesying and talking to his generation and our generation because as we speak, there are symbols, there are idols that people bow down to. They will pay thousands of dollars for shoes, purse bags, logos and it's all made in the same place there's a such thing as quality we had that conversation about quality there is a difference in quality but we're talking about people who bow who yeah. worship the lv they worship nike they worship adidas they worship nbc cnn fox news they will give their heart they will defend it to the very end there are people who have carved out even even i mean they, they wear crosses and they put more hope and trust in wearing that cross every day versus actually reading the word of God. God didn't tell us to, to put our hope in wearing a cross. And for those who wear crosses, I'm not condemning crosses. We're speaking of what Paul is saying that your hope should be in the everlasting God who has instinctively let you know that he exists. But instead, it's the church building. It's the pastor. It's oh, don't walk up there on that altar. Don't walk in that pulpit. Mm -hmm. That pulpit they don't have that kind of power. Amen. Say that. <laughs> Remember that sister Pippin? They would tell the kids, "Don't don't run in that pulpit. 
as if it had some yeah. kind of superpower. Then we'd stop and freeze in place. Yeah. We've made things idols that shouldn't have even been an idol. <laughs> Questions, yeah. comments so far? I will keep reading. We got 10 minutes left. So verse 24, because of this, Paul is now starting to get into it. He, he was very kind at the very beginning. Now he's letting them know. And so because they decided not to believe the king of king and the Lord of Lord exists, he let them go ahead into every sort of sex sin. He, he let them, I, I want to hear what these other versions say, and do whatever they wanted to do. Yes, he allowed it. He's not going to stop it. You're not a robot. God is not going to strike lightning down from heaven every time we decide to do something sinful. Vile and sinful things with each other's bodies. Instead of believing what they knew was the truth about God, they deliberately chose to believe lies. So they prayed to the things God made but wouldn't obey the blessed God who made these things. You know, the thing that God made was a rainbow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be careful because we're not going to get banned on TikTok. We're going to stay on here. Paul said, they are looking at the things God made and making mm -hmm. that thing that God made, the rainbow, their idol. Mm -hmm. And so he has allowed them to go down this path of sexual immorality, just waiting for judgment day. But what's your verse is saying to give me a comment because I know you got something in your heart. <laughs> I can feel it. I can, I can feel it. How I, do you know? I feel it. I, I can sense it. I can sense it. And then we're going to open it up to our audience here. What, what's your thoughts? What, read your version. Read what the what the, <laughs> Mr. King James said. I need to pull up the NASB. That's really my favorite version. Uh, but I don't want to pull up too much stuff on my computer because then it just starts slowing stuff down. I have to pretty much close everything because we got three streams going uh what's your version say tiktok romans chapter 1 verse 24 through and 25 what what does it say anyone on on our stream here okay, what, what you wanted me to read 25 26 25 26 um 25 124. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness mm -hmm. through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, mm -hmm. who changed the truth of God into a lie and worship and serve the creature more than the creator, mm -hmm. who is blessed forever. Amen. 24, 25? 25, I did, yeah. You want me to read 26? Not yet. Okay, yeah. No, go ahead, go ahead. We'll, we'll, we'll keep going. Verse 26. For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. Pause. Pause. Our apologetics, again, uh, the apologetics of the gospel is to defend the gospel. If anyone ever challenges you and says, show me in the Bible where that's wrong, where the alphabet is wrong, where the crooked road is wrong. We asking people to be straight and they're on a crooked road. Uh, this is this is your context. This is your context. Romans chapter 1, verse 26. God allowed it. It's wrong. Women turning against men, but going for women. It's wrong. Babe, verse 27. Read it from the King James, because if I read it from the living, we're going to get banned. And likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another men with men working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense hmm. of their error recompense. which was 
meat. Getting paid within their own souls with the penalty that they so richly deserve. That's what that last part meant. Everybody who has made a decision, Paul, go back to verse 18. Go back to verse 18. If you're looking at it, Paul knew what he was getting ready to say. Pa Paul wasn't just talking off the top of his head. He probably read this, rewrote it. Have you ever wrote something, an email that you back up, you go back up to the top to read it a little bit. Yes. And you say, let me, let me read. Paul knew exactly what he was getting ready to say when he wrote verse 18. For the truth about God is already known to them instinctively. They know what God is doing in their hearts. They have his knowledge from the earliest of time. God's holy wrath. Would come. His holy wrath, Jamie. Yes. And so he, he, he sets them up and says, so because you already kind of knew in your heart that this was wrong, he let you do it. It's wrong. But there is a no kind of new. You knew. You knew. There, there's a pen. So, so I want to be careful here. For any of our friends that are on TikTok watching, we've had a few people from that community join us. We love you. Amen. We believe that the Lord has allowed you the opportunity to come into the truth of the gospel. And this is the scripture that many people will not share with you. This this is the verse in that community that they ignore, even in their churches where they mm -hmm. tolerate it. They they're comfortable with it. And like we said, this pastor who married of the same. They don't they don't read Romans chapter one. Mm. I wonder why. Why they don't read chapter one, babe? Because they know, don't they? It's the truth. Amen. It's the truth. Give me we were thoughts. born knowing Ooh. right from That's wrong. That's it's That's the good. truth. You you had some thoughts. I hope I didn't cut your um, thought off. When I read I my think, version, I think we we you and I discussed this. Okay. Um, the the natural feeling, the normal feeling that God designed for. Uh, for reproduction and some will try to flip it but even if you try to I'm trying to be, be discreet so I, yeah so we're not bad so if you try to flip it and it's the same we can't reproduce so the go God, ahead, go God, ahead, God, God ahead, said yeah, 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 that yeah, he yeah. wanted us to be fruitful and multiply. Genesis chapter 3 verses 6 and he 7. He says. I believe that says. And, and God is not going to contradict himself. He not, would, he would not a man that. that he would. Not a man. So, so if he directs us to be fruitful and multiply. Come on. There's a certain process that must take place for us to be fruitful and multiply. And it has to be the opposite. It can't be the same. And he made the opposite natural and normal. That's what's natural. Amen. That's what's Amen. Normal. Tell it like it is, girl. Tell it like it is. <laughs> Which takes us back to verse 18. Verse 18. God shows his anger from heaven against all sinful, evil men who push away the truth. Keep it all. As long oh. as they're alive, grace is here. If you're my friend on TikTok, God's not ready to punish you yet. Paul is speaking of in verse 18 that there is an anger to come. There is a second death that will come to those who make a decision before they leave this earth to not repent, to not follow his rules, to not follow his way. My friends on Facebook, you just happen to see this. You happen to scroll. You cannot argue with the word of God. It's God's word. This is the mm -hmm. truth. Mm -hmm. And I'd like, again, this is why we're having this Bible study. I am open to listening. 
I'm opening to hearing. I'm I'll be opening. I'm open right now to anyone on TikTok, Facebook. If you're gonna watch this on YouTube later, leave a comment in the chat. Let me know your defense of uh, the the current thinking that the crooked road is okay to be crooked. When I'm letting you know that the reason that you're crooked is because it says in verse 24 is that God allowed it. Well, why am I this way? Well, why, why, why do I feel this way? God allowed you to go down that path because you don't. But, but I was, I, I like it that way. Yes, well, I'm letting you know this because he's turned you to, had already, have already read past reprobate mind in the King James. What verse is reprobate mind in King James? I, I know believe the, it's verse 24. Okay, so verse 24, you may have heard that word reprobate mind, that God turned them or allowed. Maybe 26. Read, read it, read it for For this me. cause, God gave them up to vile affections, verse 26. Does it use the word reprobate? No, it says vile. What version were we reading last night that said reprobate? Was that the NIV? Um. Let me look up the, the new American. The, the NASB says, therefore God gave them up to vile impurity and the lust of their hearts so that their bodies would be dishonored among them. I know there was a version that used the word reprobate. Yeah. Uh, Does anybody have a version that reads reprobate mind? Or maybe it's later on down in verse 28, 29. Okay. Let's keep I going. Can't interrupt. It's, it's 8 o'clock if you want to interact. Thank you. Thank you. I'm actually, I faced it toward us tonight, Miss, Miss uh, Gracie. So it wouldn't do that. But there it is. You said that you hit it on the head. There it is. Verify to continue. All right. Heads up, Jamie. Thank you. I mean, Gracie, thank Gracie, you. Thanks. Gracie, thanks. Verse 20, no, 28. I'm sorry. Okay, uh, so we haven't got there. We haven't got there. Oh, okay. Yet. okay. Yes, I see it right here. So verse let's, 28. We're going we're gonna to finish. Give us five more minutes, maybe 10. We're going to finish chapter one tonight so we can start chapter two tomorrow. We'll do a round table, hear what our, our uh, friends and family have to say. We open it up for final questions on um, TikTok, and then we'll pray and get us out of here. Verse 27. So he, he, he established in verse 26 that it was the women who your affections are wrong. Verse 27 or tw 26 were about the women. 27 were about the men. You ready for this? And then the men, instead of having normal sexual relationships with women, they end up burning with lust for each other. Men doing shameful things with other men. As a result, getting paid with their own souls, with the penalty they so richly deserve. I'm just reading the Bible, TikTok. So verse 28, so it was that when they gave God up and would not even acknowledge him, God gave them up to doing everything. So you went from being crooked to now hear the other spirits. Look at this as evil spirits that now he is allowed to come into your life. He has now wow. given you up to other evil. He uses, anytime you see the word evil, that's a spirit. I want to be very clear so we understand the Bible together. He says, now he's given you up to other evil spirits. Remember we studied that Saul, God allowed a, a tormenting evil spirit upon Saul because Saul chose to be jealous. Saul chose not to follow God. So an evil spirit came. So he gave you up to some evil spirits. What are these evil spirits? Every kind of wickedness, sin, greed, mm. hate, envy, murder, fighting, mm. lying, mm. bitterness, gossip. They were backbiters. They were haters of God, insolent, proud, braggarts, always thinking of new ways of sinning. Mm. That's the Internet. Mm. Continually mm. being disobedient to their parents. See, they tried to misunderstand broke their promises and were heartless without pity. Mm. They were fully aware of God's death penalty for these crimes, yet they went right ahead 
and did them anyway. Yeah. And oh, 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 and encourage other people to get on board. You you better not say anything about this. You better tolerate this. You mm. better pass a law. You bet you you better not speak up about this. Mm. You better what's the word they use in corporate America? Uh it you have to be inclu inclusive. You have to I think that's how we used to say it. You have to have Assimilate, assimilation, diversity, inclusion. So they took, they tried. They at least in where I work, they tried to use diversity of culture and blend inclusivity, inclusivity, inclusivity of immoral things. So it's almost like you didn't. Have, yes, there's the word. So it's almost like you didn't have a. I want the I want the cultural part. I want I want the diversity. But you're forcing me kind of down this path, path of including this community. We're gonna this this is a great start, Paul. Paul came out the bat and said, "I've been what boy, I've been waiting to talk to y'all. Twenty four years in the making, I've been hearing some stuff. Everybody's talking about y'all, good things, like Sister Pittman said. Oh, I got some other stuff that I need to share with you." And I've been really trying. Like it got canceled. It just wasn't the right time. And so I'm here to let you know that the root of David, Yeshua, he, he came, he died. But you got some people that they don't want to believe it. Oh, what a great chapter one, Paul. We're getting ready to get into some really, really. I mean, he took his time with this letter. Mm. You know, I. As I think about chapter one, and I've been reading it for a couple days, it's almost as if you are working and you're having this, you're in senior leadership, right? Okay. And so the, the president, CEO, brings everyone to the table and says, oh, this company, oh my gosh, you all are doing great. The numbers are up. Um, the clientele, they're satisfied. You all look nice. You dress nice. You all, you are so professional. I'm so, so pleased with, with what's going on. And then he says, now, what's this I hear about what y'all are doing with each other on the inside? <laughs> Exter mm -hmm. Listen, externally, you're up to par. And how many people do we see? I mean, they look like they have it all together. They, I mean, they dress nice. You know, they, they're very poised. They're very sophisticated, right? They're mannerly. They're scholarly. But God says, hold on. Wait What's in your heart? Come on. I see this in your heart. I see that in your heart. Fornication in your heart. Mm -hmm. I, but externally, on, on, on why, the surface, why are you lifting your hands you like preach that? She's preaching. She preaches. But externally, She's... you know what? What the people are saying. Your reputation is stellar. You Pharisees you, 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 and Sadducees. You can. You are well versed. You write. You're articulate. But God says. I see it's, it's your heart. Great, no, notice great that, Babylon. Notice you that great Babylon. Paul talked about the reputation. He said the reputation among the world, your reputation of your faith is great. Your faith, but, your faith in God is becoming well known around the world. Your faith, you know, Jesus Christ, the born, you know, <laughs> a buried resurrection, ascension. That that faith is, is worldwide. Is yeah. But then he says, but God has pretty much saw your heart. Some of you, yeah. Your, your heart. Can you imagine? And you have such desire. You have such burning sensation in your heart. Mm. It's so dark that all these I other, will allow you. All these other spirits. If, if that's what your heart, if that's what you strongly desire. I'm just going to give you over to, to every. See, you don't get to pick and choose. And see, that's the fallacy. That's the fallacy of those who believe that I can still be a Christian. But, but this lifestyle is acceptable what we just mm -hmm. read in the scriptures that what you don't know is that you've been deceived because you've now welcomed in lying and greed and 
ugliness. Like you're being deceived to think I'm still a good person. I just choose this. I'm being very careful. Um, I choose this other option. But when you chose the other option, you also chose everything else behind door number one. Mm. Everything. Mm. You, you don't get to pick and choose just this thing and trying to make it right. You've also accepted, Paul said, you, you now are a hater of God. Paul, oh, I don't want to be called a hater of God. Hate, envy, murder. You have the capacity now to murder. And we know what murder is. We just studied it. Over the last 18 weeks, 16 weeks, murder is to criticize. Murder is to look at someone in your heart and hate them. Call them an imbecile. Call them an idiot. You now have the capacity, Paul said, to be a gossip and to be bitter all the time. Here we are wondering. And, and Paul is addressing crooked sin. But I would go so far to say that any of these sins opens the door, the gateway to all other evil spirits. The Bible says, I think it's in Matthew chapter 18. Jesus says, when an evil spirit leaves a man, it roams the earth to see where it could land. And then it goes back. Let's go back home. Seven times stronger. Seven times stronger. Seven evil more spirits. It's one thing for me to have a spirit of bitterness that I can't shake. But now gossip can come and visit me. Fighting people to come and visit me. Hate. Envy come and visit me also. Disobeying my parents came along for the ride. Babe, are you going to let me finish with my closing? I, I'm sorry. <laughs> I cut you off. Are you, you going to let me I finish thought, with my... <laughs> I thought you had closed. Well, you I just wanna... took it. It's like you took it. It was like a relay race, and you thought that I was handing you the baton, and you just kind of finished, I'm sorry. finished the race. You forgive me. Please forgive me. <laughs> I don't. I really don't mean to cut your thoughts off. I'm sorry. Go it's ahead. a relay race. I handed you the baton, right. huh? I'm gonna hand it back. Okay. <laughs> um, but no. In in a nutshell, as I was just kind of reflecting on chapter one and the letter, that's what I thought of. Of you know, we we have this persona, and um, everything looks good externally right our reputation in the community in the church the reputation right right the holy spirit is a spirit of truth and the holy spirit will reveal people's heart it's the heart and i think about the scripture it says uh search me oh god and know my heart yes. try me oh god and know my Oh, my eyes water. Know my is it know my heart or know my spirit and see if there be any evil in me. What does it say? Psalms 139. Search me, O God, know my heart. Tell me and know my anxious Thought. thoughts. See if there is any offense, offensive way in me, and lead me in the way of everlasting. Yeah. So I, I wanted to share that, that yes, we were Christians and we, you know, look the par, but we have to make sure that our heart is pure. We have to make sure that our heart is cleansed. We have to, Evil. We, we have to make sure that you getting something from my eye. I don't know why it's watering. Daughter is cooking dinner, and I think it's the onions. <laughs> why, why are you looking? Right, you know, I got Wait, sens- why, why I got are you sens- sniffling? Have, it's my eyes. I have sensitive eyes. I cannot stand oh, to watch people. You think it's the onions she's cooking? I don't know. Other thoughts? But, um, Go ahead. <laughs> no, that's that's um that those were my thoughts in a nutshell. That as as a leader, um, as an ambassador of Christ, God directs us, and um, in a sense, I mean, this was a really strong rebuke. 
Early. It was a strong rebuke. Early. Let's go around the horn to to those here on uh, TikTok. I mean, um, Messenger, and then we'll look and see what comments, final comments that our oh, yeah. our friends have in uh in in on the TikTok. Karen says it's a heart thing. That's right, Karen. It's hard. Sister Pittman, chapter one. What'd you think about it tonight? It's very interesting. I mean, it's like um, it made me realize and recognize the choices that we make in life, you know, Um, especially when you said our faith in God is shown around the world. And then you think about it. Yeah. And the lack of is shown as well. Uh, That's right. Uh, I, I, it, interesting. That's that's all I can say about it. It's like I always learn something. I always find something um, in our studies that I can use in life. You know, to make me see things in a different way. Okay. Open my mind. It opens my mind to see things in different ways. Praise God. Praise God. Sister Gracie, thoughts tonight, chapter one. Um, um, we talked about the church membership and the tide and all that and up until months ago I mean I always just believed that you had to do all those things so I mean, mm. that opened up my eyes a couple months ago to all that so all my life I've been taught to do that so now it's completely different because I know you don't have to do all that and we are the church. So now you don't have to go to a building. So Amen. that was uh, Hallelujah. that really opened my eyes. And just to know that he's a jealous God. You know, he wants our hearts. And so, and he gives us free will. So, I mean, if you don't want to listen, then you, like a child, you're going to suffer the consequences. So that's what I got out of it. His word stands then, it stands now. That's good. That's Amen. good. That Amen. word, six, uh, 4,000 years ago is still good right now. Amen. Or 2,000 years ago, 2,300 years ago. Sister, uh, who's still on here? Is that you, Sister Jamie? Yeah, here I am. Go ahead. Um, Thoughts. What I'm, what I'm getting out of it is like Paul's introducing himself and he emphasizes the power of the gospel for salvation and addresses the consequences of rejecting God and turning. To idolatry. He is setting the stage for his future teaching on faith, righteousness, and God's plan for salvation, the importance of through Jesus Christ. Is what I'm getting out of it, and he's going to teach us about it. Yeah, yeah. This is this is just the opening, right? If I'm like you, Jamie, this this was this was an establishment of God's sovereignness. At the same time, like my wife said, an early open rebuke against sinful behavior and. If, if I was reading this letter, I'd be like, that's, he said everything you need to say. To know that he still has some amazing writings coming up about love. And we know Romans chapter 8. We may have to spend two days, two, two, two Bible studies on Romans chapter 8. Thank you, Jamie. Who's left there? Brother Vaughn, you, I don't know if you came back or not. If not, we'll move over to TikTok and see what comments. Uh, TikTok, let's read your comments. What are your thoughts on tonight's Bible study, Romans chapter 1? We're going to come back to you next week with Romans chapter 2 so you can read ahead, ask your questions in advance, or have them prepared. 18 new comments. Let's see here. It's a hard issue. You saw that one. Um, I love Romans chapter 8. I stayed there for a long time. Morgan, we we may spend a lot of time in eight. Danny said idolatry is running rampant like the days of Noah. It absolutely is. What should I do about the book that talks about giving 10% of your first increase? So real quick, Miss Thankful 48, and I, my, my sheet is in the other room of your pseudo names. And so 
I have a teaching on um, uh, YouTube around the tithe. I don't want to spend too much time on it right now. That teaching that you're referring to is probably an Old Testament scripture or Malachi. Um, quickly, just quickly, um, and I'm being careful I say this, all of the major religions or denominations have passed down the previous teaching and then the previous teaching and the previous <laughs> teaching and this is what they taught in the, in the 2000s because this is what they taught in the 1900s and this is what they taught in the 1900s because this is what they taught in the 1800s so forth and so on all the way back to the 300s when it was established within the the beginning of the the catholic church to create <laughs> This system, I don't have a lot of time to teach it. I'm just giving it at a high level. And so every church came out of the Catholic system, the Catholic system. Uh, we know all about Martin Luther. He protested. He read the Bible for himself. He protested, but he went and started his own thing and kept some of the practices. One of those practices he kept was tithing. Nowhere in the New Testament where you find Paul's writing to the churches that he established. He is the establishment of what we call the church. And he goes to tell them, here's what church looks like. Here's what you should do when you meet. Here's what giving looks like. In three different places, Paul says, when you give, give just from your heart. He says, God loves people who are just happy when they give. Nowhere does Paul put a, a stipulation on Gentiles because we wouldn't have understood it. A Roman Christian who grew up in Rome, who had Roman blood, would not have understood the implications of Malachi or Abraham at all. And so the answer, the short answer, is that you should give. I want to be very clear tonight. Give. You should give. But you're, you're not stipulated to give any amount at all. I'm sorry to all my Christian friend, pastor friends out there who have buildings. I get it. Encourage your people to give honestly. If you're trying to build a building, tell them we're building a building and we need some money. We're trying to get a church van. But, but don't do it under this pressure because Yeshua, the, the veil broke. He, he came once and for all to free us from all obligation, obligations to get to heaven. The only obligation to get to heaven is to believe, period. Don't let any preacher tell you that if you don't give, God is mad at you. If you don't give your 10%, then you're on your way to hell. That's not scripture. So what you do, and I, I can follow up with you. I think that was thankful. 88, let me screenshot you. I can follow you up. And give you some more scriptures on that. But that's a good question. All right, babe. Any other comments in the chat that you saw? Uh, Karen says, "Amen." Pressure and manipulation to give—it's not right. Not right at all. And I—I'll even advocate. If you got a bill that's due and you had a choice between paying your bill and paying the pastor, pay your bill. Pay your bill. Everyone who, again, is manipulated, well, if you give, God to give, give you back. God did give you. He, he made a way. He, he answered your, your question. He gave you the money. And you, you put it on the pastor's cell phone bill. Pay your cell phone bill first. <laughs> All right. Okay, this is a good one. Um, have a come to Jesus meeting and check your heart. Make sure it lines up with his word. Uh, another one. They say God knows my heart, but do you know his? Mm, I like that. That's good. I'm, who said that? I'm still in that. Uh, Ashley Webb. I like that. It's a, She said it's a heart issue. Yeah. Good question. We're going to get out of here. But my sister uh, Shonda said, what about muzzle not the ox that treads? So so that's I, I don't disagree with that scripture. It doesn't say 10 percent, though. So Sister Pittman will be the first one to tell you that her and I have had many conversations about honoring the ones who 
who are bringing the word. Paul Paul talks about this. He does mention in other passages that you should honor the the pastor or the preacher that's visiting your town, your city, and help them out. Again, Philippians is my one of my favorite books because it is literally about giving. Paul tells them in chapter four, I appreciate you all more than you can think. This is the summary of Philippians chapter four. Because when I go to the other cities, they can only give me so much. They don't have a lot to give. But when I come to your town, you you give me a, more than enough. Like I've learned, Paul said, to live on a little bit. I've learned to live on a lot. But I also learned that the, the key to contentment is knowing that God will supply all my needs. That I can do everything as long as he gives me the strength. And so I want to thank you, Philippians, for uh giving me so they gave to paul they gave to peter people That's give to me but it's help. it's not uh how do i say it sis there's no obligation maybe that's the key word here there's no obligation to give if you want to give i've said this before if you want to give to brother ken don't be disobedient to the lord follow your heart but you'll never hear me say it's time to take up a 10 percent off right Right. No. Shoot. What if the Lord told you to give twenty five percent? What if What if you have the means to give thirty percent? Well, I give a tithe. I give an offering. I give a building fund. I give. Just give from your heart. So I agree with you, sis. There is a scripture that says, "Don't muzzle it." You want to give, give, but you're not stiff. You know, some people all they ever gave was their ten percent. That's it. I, this is how much I make. I'm giving 10 percent and no more. Maybe you should have gave five percent. Maybe you should have gave 25 percent. Listen to the Lord. He'll tell you what the good. These are good Bible study questions. We might have to do an entire Bible study on giving. I know I owe the, the, the body of Christ a, a Bible study on dreams. I'm going to write giving on, on my list, too. We'll just do a full Bible study on giving and dreams. All right. Good comments. Good conversation. All right, we're going to get out of here. My husband explained it to me. Just give out of your heart. That's right. That's right. Jamie Thornton, you're at, you're right. If they're listening, he'll tell them exactly what to give. All right, Ron, going to need to be prayerful about taught behaviors from the church in the past. That's good. Because we got to break down some of these church. talk church church behaviors church behaviors that are absolutely church traditions mm -hmm. that's a good one i'm gonna write that one down ron you know what and it may end up coming up in rep in, in romans we may end up hitting on everything that y'all were talking about because paul let me tell you this quickly we're gonna get out of here baby i promise we're gonna get out of here we might as well use the last no, four minutes it doesn't always have to be money no no you can Someone's give of your your time, your, your expert, yeah, your expertise, your effort, mm -hmm. and your energy. Um, Romans, as I, as I established early, and I'll say this again next week for those who come on for the first time. Romans was not the first book that Paul or or country that Paul visited. However, it is the very first book after Acts. You have to ask yourself the question: Why did? Why is Romans? The very first book, if it wasn't his, it was his fifth uh, church that he wrote to. It was like the the fifth or sixth visit. Like, how did Romans get to the front of the line? How did it cut? Because Romans is almost everything established in the church that we need to know is inside the book of Romans. The the New Testament after Acts is not chronological. It's not chronological after Acts. It's based upon substance. It's based on importance. It's based on the significance of our value in the Lord. And so th those who put the Bible together read all those other books based on length, based on subject matter, and said, oh, we got to push Romans to the front because everything that is established in Christendom can be found in Romans. That's why we're studying Romans. Lord, thank you. Good, good, good Bible study tonight. I'm not saying this to be boastful or anything, but I make the wreaths for the doors and buy 
candy for the people that attend. I may have missed the context of that 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 statement, Miss Jamie. Um, listen, let's get out of here. I want y'all to enjoy your evening. Um, we're not going to hog you. We're not on here to get a bunch of likes and stuff like that. So I'm going to get off of here. Uh, I do want to remind all of you. I got to I got to just show you this since we're talking about it. The Lord gave me a book to write. If you know a man in your life that, that can use a devotional, go to my website. Check it out. Uh, I'll put the website in the chat. Uh, we have Bible study in the morning. Prayer. I mean, prayer. Thank you, babe. Prayer in the morning at uh, 6 a.m. Central right here on TikTok. If you want to pray with us, come pray with us. Many of you already are. Uh, I want to appreciate and tell everybody thank you for your support. We've had some wonderful, wonderful, amazing mornings of prayer. Sister Pittman, you would know she's already dropped. We pray for her every morning. We pray for her every every morning. So, Jamie, thanks for joining. I'm his wife, not his sister. <laughs> Who said that? Jamie. Oh, uh, the, the other Jamie. This Jamie right? No, no, not that Jamie. No, no we, we. Good to meet your sister. She's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Have a good night. You're going to close us. Lord, we thank you for another evening of Bible study. We thank you for putting it on our hearts to go through uh, Romans. We ask that as we continue to grow closer to you, that you reveal to us the truths of your word, the revelation knowledge, the Shekinah glory, the divine uh, steps that have been written by Brother Paul. I'm asking that you, you just start even now. May we get hungry and thirsty for Romans chapter 2 and we read that and come prepared next week for uh, another good Bible study. I thank you for everybody that's here tonight. Bless their evening. Bless their dinner. Bless their walk time. Bless their TV time. Bless their family time. In the name of Yeshua we pray. And everyone said hallelujah. Listen, we'll see you in the morning. Thank A you. website. Someone said they want to purchase the book. Uh, Did you put yeah, the I put it in the website. I, can, I mean, in the chat. Who was it? Just screenshot their name. I'll send them a, a private. Ashley. Message. My husband just said, I want it. Laugh out loud. Praise Ashley, God. Ashley Webb. Let me put it. Listen, I'll stay on here one more time. I'm going to put it in the chat one more time. It's uh, W by Faith. Well, let me, I missed them on website. W B Y F dot site. It stands for Walk by Faith. Not by sight, but the actual website is wbyf dot site, and then the Lord had opened up an S, S I T E. Okay. The Lord had opened up another opportunity for me with all the years of experience. I put that website in the chat too. Again, we're doing this at the end. Um, we're not soliciting in any way, form, or fashion. As much as I just want you to know what Brother Ken is doing. Um, if you need a life coach, if you know anybody that needs a mentor or someone to help them in any area of their life, physically, uh, spiritually, financially, ethically, morally, with a career, with personal development, with communication, with anger issues, go to that website, Abundantly.site. Abundantly.site will be more than happy to set up some time with you to talk you through um, some of those challenges that we all face. Set some goals. All right. Listen, have a good evening. Have a good night. We love See you. you all hey, in the Jamie and Gracie, as always, home run. Thank you so much for uh, being on here.